We'll go live, Pablo. We'll go live. It's fun. All right. Let's see what we got here, Pablo. Pablo. Woo! All right. Head hurts, man. Head hurts. We're gonna do some Q&A today, my friends. Some Q&A. I can find, there we go. All right. Let's make sure we uh, turn on the monetization so we get paid for this guy, all right? Let's turn that guy on. Oops. If the YouTube will allow me to. All right. Hot tea. That looks like we're good. All right, sweet. All right, good, good, good. All right, so what I want to do tonight, my friends, um, is we are going to answer questions, and that's what we're going to do. All right. Hello, Mark, Brett, Denise, Iowa. All right, so the first one is Luis uh, Munoz. All right, good, good. So I got – all right, good. So we're going to start with Luis here. And I got a bunch of questions I've been saving up for a few months now. We're just going to go into them. Wisconsin, Florida, uh, right on, Brett, Virginia, Iowa, Luis from um, Mark, PA, uh, New York City, right on, South Dakota, Lee. All right, so Luis says, which American funds do I recommend? Um, I don't really recommend any funds, uh, I, but I do like Income Fund of America, and I like the, uh, I've always liked the ICA, which is the Investment Company of America, Luis. And I like the uh, the new perspective. Now, the new perspective fund, Texas, uh, AWNPX. Uh, that, it, it, look, it's been a long time since I sold American funds. Uh, but AD, Minnesota, right on, right on. AWNPX was about 70% overseas and blue chip uh, uh, foreign, you know, like uh, European uh, countries. Uh, Penn, oh, I do want to bring up that. Penn is letting people go every day. North Carolina in the house, man. Um, uh, I, I, the growth on America, I've, I, I, that, that's more growth oriented. And I like the new perspective. It's more blue chip. Um, right on. So Leon 49 is held from the People's Republic of Cali, a California, soon to be living in South Carolina, and he's not bringing his, well, he's bringing his politics with him, but they're not the uh, the liberal politics. And I want to go over an example of that, of uh, liberal politics, Fle fleeing California, but finding his way in Nevada. <laughs> so Luis, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, I, look, I got no qualm of growth fund in America. I just, I, it's the growth fund, and, and I, I, I think American funds defaults of Vienna, Virginia, right on. Uh, uh, oops, hold on just a second. I gotta get Pablo. What's up, buddy? Don't stay here with me. Oh boy. Hang up. Hang tight with me, Pablo. Come on. Uh, so growth fund America is a little bit the growth oriented. American funds get they earn their they earn their money from uh, value stuff. Uh, and that's why I like the ICA, uh, the new perspective, um, and then the uh, the income fund of America. If I had one fund to choose, that's it. It'd be income fund of America. I'm a big fan of that. I think that goes back since 1974. Fantastic track record. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, none, I have no problem. I don't like the American funds bond stuff. The bond stuff isn't that great, but American funds for the stocks, be hard to beat. Uh, the Quag says, do you think it's better to have VNQ and an IRA, Roth IRA, or independent stocks? And I don't even know what VNQ is. That's obviously a Vanguard something. Let's take a gamble, a gander at B and Q. Man, uh, B and Q. Yeah, hold on, sorry, my friends. That's the real estate index one. Oh yeah, definitely want that in a Roth for sure. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Anything that has high dividends like that should be in a Roth. Absolutely, certainly not a uh, a qual, not a uh, taxable account if you can avoid it. That's for sure. So yeah, I definitely recommend if you're going to have BNQ, you definitely want that in your Roth. Uh, I don't know what S, I don't know any of those stocks right there. So um, I, I would put BNQ in a, uh, Eric. Uh, I'd put BNQ in a Roth for sure. What is the max should I put into my four hundred one k? Come on, buddy. Where are you going? What's uh, so Alan says, what's the max I should put into uh, 
So you're leaving uh, Philly, Mark? What's the max I should put in my 401k? Homes paid off, 59 years old. I now put 25% into the 401k with no debt. Uh, what's the max you should put into it? I, you know, I, I, I think people overlook or underappreciate the value of having uh, going into retirement with less taxes due. I, I, I really, really do. And we can spreadsheet this until we're blue in the face to say you want to have more um, in deferred money. Well, you want to put as much as you can into deferred money. We can spread a spreadsheet all day long, but the issue is when you're working is when you can most afford to pay higher taxes. So from a just pure tax perspective, the argument is always take advantage of the, uh, the tax the deferral. Uh, if you're in a higher tax bracket now than you will be in the future. I, I, and, you know, I kind of get that. But if you have the, the, the interesting thing is when you're working is when you have usually most people have most of their income where they can most afford to, to prepay the taxes. It's when you're retired and you can't go back to your job and you can't afford to have a 25% going down the drain because of taxes, federal and state. It's awful hard to make that money back up, especially if we have a low uh, growing economy and with a low growing market. So I just say, take advantage of the uh, the match, you know, and you can put that to a Roth even if you want. I, I don't know what your tax bracket is. So you just gotta, you know, tread carefully there, but. I don't put anything to a traditional IRA and I, I don't have my own 401k. Uh, you know, I guess I could, I could start a solo K. I just, I prefer to pay the taxes now. I, I tell you, there's something liberating about paying the taxes now. And that means even if I pay a little bit more and I am, cause I'm in a high tax bracket, you know, I'm a higher, I'm a 24% tax bracket. Um, but I, you know, frankly, I don't work that hard. I, I mean, what I mean is I, I make good money uh, but I could be doing this for another 15 years. Easy. It's not that challenging in terms of, uh, you know, my, it's not laborious, if that makes sense. So should I be, you know, deferring more and more money? Uh, so that way I can save money in taxes later on when I have less money coming in. Eesh, I don't like that at all. So um, anyway, pop the like button times two, just like they voted in Georgia. Actually, we just found, they found three, they just found 3,000 3, votes in a County that wasn't even on the radar Floyd County, which is Rome, Georgia, about an hour and a half northwest of me. Uh, of those 3,000, 1,900 went to President Trump. They just found him. And it wasn't because of a human error. You know what it was? Take a wild guess. Take a guess what the error was. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone want to guess what the error was in Floyd County? Take a wild, wild guess. It wasn't human error, supposedly. I mean, human error for the good people and uh in uh, Floyd County. What's up, Dan? So they found 3,000 votes. Uh, right on, Dave. Uh, Dave gives 10 bucks or a uh, problem. That's awesome. Um, the 3,000 votes were due to Dominion election systems. Hmm. Floyd County, Dominion. No, that wasn't on the radar. 3,000 votes, Dominion election systems. And Antrim County, whatever, is in Michigan. Dominion election systems. There is, was it Oakland County, Michigan? I don't think that's Dominion electric election systems, but that's a big error. New Hampshire, they had issues in New Hampshire. I can't remember if that's Dominion election systems or not, but we've no, Dominion election systems is fraudulent. There's no other way around that. Even uh, uh, Hayden or Biden from uh, Oregon, or yeah, from Oregon, Klobuchar and some other clown said that in 2000. And Elizabeth Warren said that. Too. Uh, all right. Can you do an EDIL reconsider video? The hell is EDI? I don't know what EDIL is, man. Um, an EDIL? I don't know what that is. Uh, Kirk says my BlackRock killing it in my taxable investment account. Right on. That's uh, that's what we want to see. So we want to see uh, being killing it in your taxable investment. I got VTI in my taxable investment account. I do have VTV in there as well. Uh, which means I'll have some dividends, which ideally that should be my Roth. I have no Roth and I'm not going to have a Roth. Um, it'd be just because it's, for me, I don't, I, I, I just, I'm going uh, post-tax or bust, but everything I contribute now is into VTI. Uh, so I just said, okay, I'm going to keep my VTV and just go uh, full throttle to VTI, the, the total stock index. Um, and, you know, just let, let the chips fall where they may, but um that's right. We want we want your money to be killing it in a taxable account. That's just 
I'm telling you, man, that's the way to do it. I mean, we also want to kill any Roth. Don't get me wrong. I, I got no qualm with that. But the Roth, I'm only 50. There are restrictions on that. All right, Kevin says, for tax reasons, should I max out the 24% tax bracket this year when I roll over from traditional to Roth? I, I, man, I don't know. Because, I, I mean, should you max it out when you might only be in a 12%? I, I, I just, that's a tough one right there. I don't know. I don't know, Kevin. It completely contingent on the future tax burden that you have. So remember, it hit the issue that I'm, so we have two completely different scenarios here. I just want to clearly make sure everyone's on the same page. When we are converting, converting, that means we're taking money that has been pre-taxed or has been, uh, hasn't been taxed and moving it into a Roth, all right? So we're paying tax on the very first dollar we're doing that. So we can literally do, Bill Gates can convert his, his ill-gotten gains uh, from tr traditional to Roth. He can do that and pay tax. That's no big deal. That's a conversion. All right, so if you're working and you're in a 22% tax bracket, let's just say, and then you convert, which puts you in a 24% tax bracket, uh, should you do that? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know because I don't know if you're going to only be in a 12% tax bracket in the future because maybe you don't have that much in a uh, pre-tax money. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't get anything but Social Security. I don't know. I don't know the answer. That's a tough question to answer. It is. It's just there's a lot going on. However, on the other hand, if we're not talking conversions, we're only talking about putting money into an account, you have limits on how much you can do that. I'm just oh, good boy. I mean, you can only do whatever, 25,000 if you're 50 years old or above. Um, so if you can only do 25,000, that's not going to put you into a 22 or 24 or 33% tax bracket, most likely. It's not the same as converting. So because of that, you have limits anyway. And so what I was saying, the first guy said, man, just put the freaking, you know, go, go either into the Roth, but put the amount of the match in and then go into the Roth or just go into a taxable account. One of those two things, because they're two completely different things, contributions versus conversions. And I, I just think a lot of people mix those up. Hope that makes sense. All right. So Mark says, I have home value uh, at 800,000 in 2010. I'm going to sell it as this, uh, as my retirement is in two years. Okay. All right. So Mark is going to sell his $800,000 home from 2010. Uh, when he retires in two years, has been his family since 1935. I live in it to this day. Will I have to pay taxes when I sell it? All right. So a couple of things going on there. If it's been handed down to you, hopefully via inheritance, um, then it's been step up from whenever you received it at the date of death of the previous owner. I, I have no idea what that is. So if he, if you inherited it at uh, 600,000 bucks and now it's worth 800,000 when you sell it, uh, well, hell, you can even say after, it could be worth uh, 1.1 million when you sell it. That's five hundred thousand dollars. And if you're married, there's no capital gain whatsoever, so you can sell it tax free. If it's been added, if your name was added to the deed, for, and I hope that wasn't the case. Heaven forbid, do not add your kid's name to your deed. Oh, for the love of me, that's a gift. That's a gift, and they lose a step up basis. Can't tell you how many people do that. Uh, then your cost base is going to be significantly lower than what it was at the date of death for an inheritance, which means any gain above a certain amount will be subject to uh, above 500,000. If you're married, will be subject to tax, uh, to capital gains tax. So it depends on what the, on what your cost basis is. Depends on what you're married, if you're married. And if your cost basis is, if you're married, if your cost basis is lower than $500,000, uh, of gain, you're going to pay tax on that money. If you're single and your cost basis, you only get two hundred fifty thousand dollars as a as a un, unlimited as a capital gain exclusion. If you're single and your cost basis puts you well above well below two hundred fifty thousand dollars of gain, you're going to pay tax on that. I, I I hope that makes sense. But until we know your cost basis is, is a moot point. Again, the cost basis is what you either inherited at at date of death. All right. So your mom died in 2010. She left you this house worth 600,000 bucks. That is your cost basis. Whatever you sell it above $600,000 is subject to capital gain. However, however, you have a $500,000 capital gain exclusion if you're married filing jointly. So if you're married, 600 is your cost basis. 1.1 million is the sales price. There's no capital gain at all. If you're single, it's not 500,000, it's 250. So you're single, 600,000 is your cost basis, 850 is your sales price, that's 250,000, no capital gain at all. If your mom added to you your name to the deed, 
1992, she has made a gift of half of the property to you, which means your cost basis, only half of it will be stepped up into your cost basis. And that's gonna to be too complex to explain it right here, but that means you've significantly reduced your cost basis, which means you significantly increased your capital gain, which for you, which you have to pay tax on. I'm just telling people, don't do that. I hear this all the time. I'm gonna add John Joni to my account because my I'm gonna add Joni to my deed because I want to make sure she can take care of me if something happens. All right, mom, you just freaking screwed Joni up from a capital gain perspective. Now remember, Sniffy Joe is trying to get rid of the step up basis. It will never, I mean, it's never gonna pass, but and that's where these people are coming from. Sniffy Joe says, we want to get rid of step up basis, which is insane, which is probably the worst tax planning scenario there could possibly be. Income tax is, you know, whatever. That's bad. It's not the worst thing that ever happened. Getting rid of step up basis is a huge tax to middle class, huge. Uh, again, Republicans, they, uh, uh, they did not make a very proactive uh, campaign. Didn't really need to, frankly, because the economy was kicking butt until Fauci got his freaking claws involved. But uh, all right, uh, I have. A, OK, we talked about it. is there an ETF version of the Wellington fund? Not that I'm aware of, Roberto. Um, and I, I there probably won't be because it is an actively managed fund. Uh, oh, right on, Mark. So Mark says he's not moving yet, just saying he's thinking about it. Uh, Brian says how uh, how to invest large chunk in index fund when the market is so overvalued. Um, is the market overvalued? And then I'd say, how old are you? So, I mean, why do we think the market is overvalued? If you think the market is overvalued, I mean, uh, if you think the market is overvalued, then, I mean, here's the way I look at investing. Where is it going to be 10 years from now? Um, is it going to be up, down, or sideways? One of those three things. What's the likelihood of it being up? What's the likelihood of it being down? What's the likelihood of it being sideways? Well, if it's sideways, it's not going to matter. You still get the dividends. If it's up, then you wish you would invest it today. If it's down, then you should have waited. But I don't know. I, I look, if I'm a, I'm a long-term investor, so I, what's the likelihood of it being up? Then I put my money in. Uh, my man says, should I lease or buy a car? I have a chapter on this in this book, Mr. Ruby. Mr. Ruby, what's my opinion on leasing a car as a younger person? All right, so I have this chapter on that right there. Uh, and I will tell you. On this is my book. Uh, you can buy your own copy if you like. Uh, reliable transportation without breaking the bank. Page 45. Reliable transportation without breaking the bank. Um, and I'll just read you a little bit. Reliable transportation is a must. In fact, reliable transportation is so important that it may be the difference between securing and keeping a good job or being unemployed. You can't have your car break down on the way to an interview, for instance. So this chapter is devoting to making sure you have reliable transportation, but also that won't break the bank in acquiring it. Let me take you back to the summer of 2008, before coronavirus, before Sniffy Joe, and before Trumpster, when things were simple. When my family was dealing with unreliable transportation. On a hot July day, my wife took the kids in our 10-year-old in our minivan. We had a Dodge uh, uh, ca uh, Caravan. Grand Car Caravan. We had a Dodge Caravan. My wife took the kids in our in our 10 year old Dodge Caravan uh, to a mall in South San Antonio. We had just moved to South to San Antonio. South San Antonio is a tough part of town. All right. This is July in South Texas. Just FYI. When they came out of the mall, the van wouldn't start. Thankfully, it's just an old battery. So I was able to replace that. But what if it was an alter alternator? Uh, what if there's more to it? That would have been bad. Uh, however, think of my wife sitting outside in the 100 degree heat with four young children in tow in a rough part of town may be quite uncomfortable. We couldn't let this happen again. And the van the van has served us for many years, uh, but it's time we get something more reliable for her to drive. In fact, we bought the van uh, from a guy on the side of the road on 42 in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and it had 70,000 miles when he bought it. I think when we traded it, it had 200,000 miles. We thought we'd go get a two or three old minivan with around 30,000 miles on it. Uh, after all, we didn't want anything new that would just appreciate 15% the minute we drove it off the lot. Also, we couldn't afford a new vehicle, so a low mileage used vehicle seemed like the way to go. However, upon doing research, we were stunned at how expensive used low mileage minivans were, well over 20,000 bucks. Most banks won't finance a used vehicle for more than three years. So a $20,000 vehicle financed for three years would run about 600 bucks a month. 
If we could afford 600 bucks a month, we'd have just bought something new. So we were stuck. We needed reliable transportation for my wife to shuttle around our four kids. Our current minivan, I already talked about over 200,000 miles on it. Uh, low mileage used minivans were too expensive. We certainly didn't want to buy a high mileage used minivan because then we'd be right back where we started. We'd need to get it looked at and be unreliable. Um, then my wife saw an ad about leasing. During a closeout sale, we could lease a brand new Honda minivan uh, for about 250 bucks a month. I'd always believed leases were bad things, but desperate times lead to desperate measures. And we, want to, we went to the dealership to discuss how to get a vehicle. As with everything, there are positives and negatives. On the good side, you get a new vehicle for a much smaller monthly payment than many used vehicles. That's probably the best selling point of the lease is a low monthly payments and a brand spanking new vehicle. There are drawbacks. You have mile, miles, mileage restrictions. Uh, you go over the lab, uh, you have mileage. Second, at the end of the lease, typically three years, you'll have a sizable residual value that you must either pay in full uh, to buy the vehicle or turn that vehicle and uh, lease another, which means you'll kind of be stuck by continuing your leasing. Given our circumstances, the lease was a superior option. We paid $250 a month for that vehicle for 30 year, for three years with a residual value of $15,000 at maturity. The lease uh, purchase cost us around $25,000 all told for a uh, 2010 brand spanking new Honda Odyssey. Um, for a brand new minivan with payment terms that didn't break our budget, and we did buy the van outright. In fact, that is a car, the van we gave to this family here in Georgia uh, just last year, as a matter of fact. Um, because Honda Odysseys are freaking awesome. Either way, we kept our payments way below the $600 a month uh, cost for a used vehicle. Anyway, so that's what we did with the lease. We've leased ever since. I am a fan of leasing, um, especially if you buy them out right now. Be careful because Honda Odysseys do the, keep the residual value quite well. So you got to be careful. I was talking to a lady, um, my job before I started my own company, uh, she was, used to be a saleswoman at a Mercedes dealer up in Maine. And we got to talk at leases and I, I'll never forget. It. And she said, oh, you don't understand with leases. You can make a killing if you buy, if, if you know the residual value and if the residual value value is much higher um, or is much lower than the actual market value, you can make a killing. And she talked about these Mercedes that, you know, they, they would, there's almost like a stock trade an arbitrage. Essentially you can make an arbitrage essentially what it is. So, and look, car companies aren't stupid, but a Honda Odyssey is $15,000 residual value when the car itself is worth 20,000 bucks. I could have easily, easily, you know, made three or $4,000 quick profit on that. Just about buying it outright and turn around the open market and selling it. But then I still need a vehicle and I don't want to do that. But she was saying with Mercedes that those sometimes are good boy. The residual value is significantly higher than the fair market value. And then some people still buy them outright, which is stupid because then you're buying a vehicle that's worth a heck of a lot less than the market value is, which doesn't make sense. Um, uh, so she is, and so you're paying, you know, a pre, you're basically paying 30% more than the market value for that same vehicle. And she was, a lot of people just don't, don't follow that. That's why leasing gets such a bad rap because a lot of people just don't fall. It's kind of like paying significant investment management fees. People just, they just don't take the time to figure it out. All right. Oh, oh here comes Sunny. Let's see if Finney comes. Hold on just a second. Let's see if I can't introduce you to our new dog, Finney. Finnegan. Um, all right. Uh, no, all right, right on. Which Vanguard, uh, we, uh, which Vanguard fund is similar to the Fidelity over-the-counter fund? Nah, man, I have no idea. Sorry. Uh, buy Tesla stock at these inexpensive prices is the bet of a lifetime. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm sorry I was not clear my question. I meant to say, do you think a Vanguard fund would be a better investment or should I buy individual REITs for a Roth? Man, I got no idea. I mean, that's that's up to you. I don't have REITs. I just have VTI. So I guess you can take I have my three holdings. I got four holdings. Small Mountain VBK, which is the Vanguard Small Cap Growth ETF. Uh, large Amount in VTV, which is the Vanguard Value uh, ETF, Large Cap Value ETF. I plug uh, all my money, my, every two weeks I put money into VTI. And I have uh, some, uh, yeah, about 15% of my portfolio in VDIGX, which is the Vanguard 
can't remember if that's a dividend growth or dividend appreciation. I think it's a dividend growth fund. So in terms of what do I think would be a best investment, I, man, I have no idea. And anyone who says that doesn't know what the hell they're talking about um, because they don't know. I mean, I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. So I just, uh, no way you can make that question, answer that question. Michael says, when you do a Roth conversion, what are taxes due? When are the taxes due on that conversion? Um, uh, the taxes are due. Uh, I mean, I, look, the IRS is a stupid. They do say, look, you have to pay estimated taxes. So they're going to say, hey, you did a $100,000 Roth conversion. You're in a 12% tax bracket. $12,000 is what you should have paid. You did not pay uh, early enough. As such, we're going to give you a, a penalty of 6% or whatever it is. So I would pay the taxes up front, frankly, just be done with it. Uh, uh, Kirk said, I was thinking about buying a Tesla car in three years or so. Uh, Steven Crowder changed my mind. Uh, okay, I'm not, I, I'm not sure what you mean. Did Steven Crowder do a, a, a Tesla thing or something like that? Um, I, I look, I like electric vehicles. I'm a big fan of EVs. I, I like the idea of a acceleration in a, in a quietness that can blow away an ICE. I love it. I think it's cool. I mean, I just, I think it's fantastic. I do not like the idea of having to charge with electricity. Um, when my biggest concern is grids going down and things like that nature. I don't like that. I like the good old fashioned gasoline for sure. Um, but it doesn't mean I get no qualm with EVs. I still like hybrids best just because I'm always thinking as a prepper, um, two is one, two is one and one is none. I.e., with Tesla, the electricity goes down, you're screwed. And no, your solar uh, freaking rooftops is not going to get the job done. All right, so you're screwed. All right, with gas, you know that's the, that's the beauty of freaking fossil fuels. It's such just this tiny little bit amount. The the amount of oh, it's insane how much energy is stored in these tiny little things. Just let me give you this, and I I, I always refer to this is amazing to me. All right, so gas, just coal, all right? Coal is a fossil fuel. There's so much energy stored in coal, all right? That is just, it blows away solar by, it's not even close. Gasoline, I mean, you can even say wood um, because wood is a fossil fuel. I mean, literally was renewable, but still, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wood is, a, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. But how are you gonna turn wood to electricity? Well, you need a gasifier. It's not very efficient, be it as it may. Coal is a huge, storage of energy it's, it's amazing to me but nuclear nuclear is insane so a golf ball size of uranium is the equivalent stored energy as yankee stadium filled to the brim with coal i th think about that that's I mean, the 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 density of coal fill yankee stadium to the brim with coal how, I mean, think, and then in terms of solar photovoltaic, a photovoltaic just means taking the sun's energy and converting it to electricity. That's what PV stands for, photovoltaic. You got solar thermal, which is much, much, much more efficient than solar photo, photovoltaic. But anyway, so you got a, a one meter by one meter, one meter squared solar photovoltaic panel. I'm not going to get the, the physics here real quick, but just for simplicity, that's, that's generally speaking the rule of thumb. How many solar panels a one meter one square meter we'll say even 25 percent efficiency would give you the equivalent density energy storage if you will or electricity in this case specifically with with a solar photovoltaic that coal can store uh, the whole uh, thing of uh, yankee stadium all right well solar is not is, can't hold a candle to coal but coal can't hold a candle to nuclear it's amazing i just i the, the Oh, it's it's a stunning sense of accomplishment how wonderful nuclear power is it's insane i love it I, i'm stunned that this is even debatable especially if everyone hates co2 which i don't get wait gotta take a deep breath <sighs> gotta take a deep breath <sighs> you know what i was just breathing out don't tell aoc don't tell michael mann i was just breathing out CO Breathing in oxygen, breathing out CO2. I'm still here. I haven't died. Shh. Anyway, so nuclear. If you hate CO2, you got to be pro nuclear. Anyway, so going back to hybrids, the idea of being able to use an ICE or a battery or a combination thereof, I think it's pretty cool. 
I think it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, California moving to Tennessee. Just don't bring your politics, Janine. I had a guy, uh, my man, Bri or Bree, I'm not sure it's a dude or a chick, but Bree on my channel, who's from California, just moved to uh, Nevada. Uh, Bree is a big lib. And I said, well, I hope you left your California politics back in California from San Francisco, moving from San Francisco Bay Area, of course, to Nevada because they could buy a hell of a lot bigger of a home and pay a whole lot less taxes in Nevada than they could in California, from which they their own policies went and changed to California. Now they're going to take those same policies in Nevada. They got to do some kind of moratorium that if you move from one state to the other, you got to wait five years before you can vote. Because I just I'm sitting there thinking you're taking your voting. You, the reason you're leaving in California is because you're the things you voted for. Now you're going to take this, but you know, they don't get it. They don't get it. It's kind of like socialism has never been tried or communism hasn't been tried the way we think we can do it. If we just do it the way we can, it'll be great. We'll be a utopia. All right. Economic injury disaster loans, man. I got no idea what those are. All right. Do I help clients create a smart income plan for those who want to retire early, uh, early being somewhere between 50 and 54 years old? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Schwab or Vanguard. I'm starting to like Schwab better, Max. I'm starting to like Schwab. I just, I, I just, I'm, I like it. I have Schwab. When USA got bought out by Schwab, now, I've had Schwab accounts before simply because I used to work there as well. So I worked at Vanguard for three years. And I went to Schwab for not quite two, but two years. Um, and I just, Schwab is, is just, it's is the, uh, it's a state of the art uh, without question. So I'm a, <coughs> I'm a big fan. I like Vanguard too, but just Schwab's got, every, I mean, just, it's just better. I, I don't know also to put it. It's just, it's fantastic. Uh, quick question. I have an HSA and I have stocks that pay dividends. Is the dividends are taxed when I retire? No, because as HSA, anything that comes out for qualified expenses, expenses are tax-free, which is why HSAs are awesome. Remember, qualified expenses do not cover health insurance costs. I can't remember. I don't think they cover uh, Medicare premiums. They do cover out of pocket, if I'm not mistaken. They don't cover health insurance premiums. I think that includes Medicare, Louise. So just be be advised. Uh, I don't know anything about. It. EIDLs. I don't know the first thing about them. Economic injury disaster loans. I don't know what those are. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's the best retirement strategy for us single military retirees? Uh, are we just going to get hammered in the tax bomb at 70? Yeah, that's, that's uh, well, 72, right, Dan? So uh, Vincenzo, right on. Um, when I was uh, working with a lady emailed me the other day, uh, same thing, single a re military retiree. And I just, I said, look, I'd, I'm happy to take your money. I just don't think it's, I don't think you should pay me because there's not much planning to do for a single person with a pension. There's just not, I mean, I hate to say it, but and secondly, um, for tax planning pers perspective, you're, 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 the fact that you're single means there's no widow's tax trap. And that's the big tax planning opportunity that married people have that singles don't. Now, if you're not having a pension, there is some planning opportunities between retire date and before you hit uh, Medicare uh, and Social Security and then RMDs. But if you're in this case, I think the lady was 65. I was like, it's just not much to do. Um, so if you're single, not much you can do um, other than doing conversions before you hit Medicare, before you hit uh, RMDs and Social Security. But <laughs> Just not much to do, man. And now, if you're 55 years old, like my man before that said, I'm 50 to 55. There's some opportunities there for sure, but um, but once you got that pension, it's tough. It's tough for sure. It really is. Uh, you're already going to have the tax torpedo on Social Security just because you have that pension. So there's nothing you can do to avoid tax torpedo uh, because the pension puts you in there with Social Security. So it's just I'm just telling you, a single person. With a pension, it's hard to do any uh, proactive tax planning. It just is. Um, beginner question, uh, Fatty. Uh, in your barbell thing, what is the cash you speak of? Is like cash in a bank, or I, I like the uh, I like Ginny May, as I've talked about before. I'm a big fan of uh, the Vanguard Ginny May fund, V F I I X. Big fan. Um, been a Ginny May fan forever. I mean, I first started at Vanguard in 1998. Ginny May was paying six and a quarter, something like that. I remember just thinking I was what I was at like 28 years old back then, 
I remember thinking when I retire, I want to have a hundred million bucks in Ginny May when I'm 65 years old. It'd give me 62,000 a year of income, whatever that was. Um, and this, you know, and an IRA is taxable as ordinary income and non IRA is still taxable as ordinary income. But I said, man, I'll give me 60,000 a year of income. Well, fast forward till today, it ain't giving you 60,000 a year in income. Now it's giving you like 18,000 a year because the interest rates are so low. But remember the point of the barbell isn't to generate huge interest on that cash component is to keep it safe. But Ginny Mae keeps it safe. There's a little bit of volatility there, not much, just like this kind of where stocks like this, uh, but it's government bonds, man. And it's liquid. So I'm a big fan. All right. Cat says uh, he or she is uh, new on the channel and they just subscribed. All right. Right on. Luis, last question. Uh, I have traditional 401k, which I put 40, uh, 20 percent in the raw suite. I put the max. I'm the HSA. Put the max. Can this be a good tax max? Yeah, that's that's the best you can do right there, brother. 100 percent. Good stuff. There's vinyl. Interesting. You can use loss. So vinyl says you can use capital loss carry forwards against profits on your primary residence. Interesting. I have to dive in that a little bit deeper. Can you use stock loss carry forwards? I bet you, I, I don't know. I don't know. I bet you can't, but I, I don't know. Um, Eric says, what do I do if my work retirement 401k manager won't let me pull the money out so I can move to an IRA for the CARES Act? Um, well, it's not moving money out of your 401k to an IRA. It's moving because that doesn't that the CARES Act doesn't cover that. So remember, the CARES Act was a you could pull a hundred thousand dollars out of your deferred accounts, all right, and wish to use that to deal with you know commie virus issues that you're having. But that being you had to, I mean, literally, you're pulling the money out to deal with whatever issues you're facing with. So to move it from a 401k to an IRA. That's that's just that, that you can't do that because that's not part of the, the CARES Act. So you'd have to tell your 401k manager, hey, I want to move it out of my 401k and put it into a brokerage account. That's what you have to do. And that way you can pay taxes over the next three years on that as opposed to one fell swoop. And there's no premature distribution penalty. So that's the, so your 401k manager is right. You can't move your money from your 401k to an IRA under the provisions of the CARES Act. The 100 percent right. Uh, pulverizer says, I remember jokingly saying in March that Dow would be 30,000 by the end of the year. We're just a month early here. Did we hit 30? Did the Dow hit 30? That's pretty cool if it did. Under Trump's watch, but no one will say that. Hey, nope, 29,950. 29,950. James Glassman. Bat, take a bow. James Glassman had written the book Dow 30,000. Yeah, so Mark says his employer, University of Pennsylvania, won't even let you take money out for the CARES Act. And it says uh, explicitly the CARES Act is completely contingent on what your provider allows for sure. Uh, hello from Tel Aviv, David Ben Meyer. Right on, man. Um, right on. Stay away from my family's inheritance government. Kirk, <laughs> they want it, man. Uh, yeah, right on. So Vinyl says, uh, oh, Bruce, you got deleted from the Google moderator team. What the? So the Google moderator team is back again. What is going on, man? They must be looking at live streams saying that we're talking about Sniffy Joe. All right, the Democrats' core constituency is the one who benefits from capital gains step up the most. I completely agree, 100%. Uh, that's, but they don't care about their core constituency. They just don't. If they did, uh, no. uh, Bruce D, you had deleted a message, um, from the Google moderator team, which is weird. Yeah. Stop market is the only place to part money in the long run. Completely agree. Uh, if you have your own corporation, you could lease a car with pre-tax money. Is Exxon, is Exxon recovering? I haven't looked at it. Let's take a look at Exxon. By the way, old Finney the dog slept like a charm last night. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Exxon fell to 34, 32, and now it's back up to 38. So you've had a nice little run in Exxon. 
in the last couple of uh, last two weeks. And the dividend is still at uh, the dividend yields back down to 9.65. Did they ever cut the dividend? I don't, I don't remember. I don't really pay much mind to it. Yeah, oil is going to soar. Should I double down on it? PVH is undervalued. Yeah, Bruce, I saw that freaking five percent stay out and freaking Deutsche Bank, those idiots. So Deutsche Bank, if memory serves, was bailed out by Germany. They're advocating now for a privileged tax because we're privileged if you work from home. They can kiss my big fat behind. PVH Corp. I don't even know what that is. What the hell is PVH? Um, I don't know what PVH is. It just says PVH Corp. Provision holding or something? I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's got, uh, doesn't have a PE, so it's not making any, any profits. The stay at home, they own Calvin Klein, I guess. Yeah, I guess they own Calvin Klein. Outlet Mall Staple is closing all of its stores. Wow. You guys watch that? Uh, there's a guy on YouTube does uh, Dead Malls or some of like that. It's a retail apocalypse, I think, or something like that. And he just did a, a video the other day about the Anthem uh, Outlet Mall in Anthem, Arizona, Dead Malls. I was like, damn, Anthem was booming when we lived there. The Dell Web community and everything. And uh, when we didn't live in Anthem. We lived in Phoenix. But Anthem, I freaking loved Anthem back then. BTX for life. I'm going to get that tattooed across my chest. BTS for life. We're going to do freaking hand signs. What is the max Roth contribution one can make if married and you have an employer 401k with match? Can you max out both accounts? Yeah, as long as you don't uh, exceed certain income thresholds, something like 200,000 uh, bucks. Deutsche Bank is the worst investment bank. I, oh, Deutsche Bank, I hate those freaking clients. The banksters and they're loving Sniffy Joe. The banksters love them. Burgess Owen. I saw that, man. It looks like the Republicans might actually pick up 15 house seats. We're getting close there. And I say we because I throw in with the Republicans, as I said many times. So it looks like we're, uh, it's weird. Everything went red except for Atlanta, Detroit, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia. Everything else went red. Hmm. Uh, uh. But no, there's no evidence of nothing, nothing. Forget freaking uh, uh, county in Rome, Georgia, that had 3,000 votes just suddenly appear from Dominion election systems. And they, of those 3,000, 1,900 went to uh, President Trump. But nothing to concern yourself with. We got this under control. Just trust the World Economic Forum and the Build Back Better people. Uh, Harry is pushing chest Tesla. So Harry is in the midst of a dump and a pump and dump. Just playing your brother. Uh, Tesla just got in the S P 500. Yep. That's going to be, uh, it's going to go up. If you go with the S P 500, people start buying that stock. So I guess I now own Tesla. I own Tesla. Uh, they should start as well. What they should do is do an S P 500 without, uh, Amazon, uh, and the other ones, but then, then that's what would be called a, uh, a smart beta play. And what's the other one? Uh, equalize. Um, <sighs> Research affiliates talks about this all the time. Smart beta and equal weighted index. Uh, re, uh, Rob Arnott over at Research Affiliates, Raffi, uh, which I like. But uh, that would be a uh, an equal weighted index, which now is probably time to actually buy into an equal weighted S&P 500. Uh, CB Michigan, salute you, sir. Uh, credit unions will give you a five-year loan on used vehicles. Might be a better option versus a traditional bank. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't have any traditional banks. I got Navy Fed and Penn Fed and USAA. That's it. Uh, yeah, buy a uh, pre-owned. Uh, Burgess is a is a Republican uh, House Representative Congressman. Uh, so remember Mia Love, and she she went anti-Trump. I don't know why, and she lost. Uh, I, I liked her. I don't know why she went anti-Trump. She lost in 2018, and Burgess Owen took her. Uh, the, went so went red to blue to back to red with Burgess Owens. And uh, if you remember him from the Oakland Raiders, and he was interviewed on Rush Limbaugh a lot of times. I'm a big fan of Burgess, and he's not a squish, not in the least. He's fantastic, but he's not a senator. He's a he's a congressman. But hopefully, when Mittens gets on a Biden uh, trans uh, Biden's team there, 
uh, that seat will come up. How awesome would it be to another, another black uh, Republican senator? That's so why I don't understand. I don't get why Kemp, uh, freaking Brian Kemp. Oh my goodness. I, I don't, uh, he should, I, look, I, I, uh, it's so frustrating. So freaking what's his name leaves and uh, he appoints Kelly Leffler. And I, look, I don't like her. I don't hate her. I don't, I mean, she's freaking 10 times better than Warnock, the freaking commie that she's running against. No way I could vote for her or for him. But I'm just like, Kemp, you had such an opportunity to make huge inroads with, with blacks in Georgia. And you just, you, you dropped the ball and you took a, the lady who's literally married to the CEO of the New York Stock Exchange. I just, oh my goodness. I'm sitting there. Could you have made a worse pick? It's nuts. Nuts. And you, there's tons of freaking up and coming black guys or black women in the Republican party that you could have freaking put in there. Oh, it just kills me. I, we, we are so bad at just basic emotional political stuff with a little bit of pandering. I get it. Pandering. Wow. Welcome to the party. What do you think politics is about? And so we, you know, it just, it's just as crazy to me that freaking Kemp and I have, I've yet to hear a freaking damn thing that Brian Kemp says about this, you know, freaking thievery going on in Georgia right now. Not a damn thing. Not one thing. But I hear Stacey Abrams all the place. It's like, she's our damn governor. Anyway, so we had uh, John, Joe James or John, Joe James up in Michigan got stole from. We know that um, because Trumpster did too. Um, that, you know, it would have been awesome because I think with Kamala gone, there's only one black senator on the on the Democrats, which is Cory Booker. And we have one black senator, which is Tim Scott for the Republicans. So if uh, Joe James did not get thieved or uh, or Burgess Owen replaces Mittens or freaking Brian Kemp would have used his pull his head up his butt and freaking put a a, 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 a guy that can appeal to a broad range of people. Uh, we'd have more black senators on the Republican Party than the Democrats do. How awesome would that be? I think it's yes. Is it pandering? Yes. Is it tokenism to some regard? Yes. Well, welcome to the club, man. Welcome. This politics works a little bit of pandering, a little bit of tokenism. And if you think it doesn't, why do you think they're so look at the first black astronaut, first this, first that? Because it makes people feel better for some reason. And that's fine. So you got to play the game and regard it. But you can also poke the bear and say, or poke them. Say, look at you guys, Democrats. You say we're freaking Nazis. Klansmen and stuff, and yet we got more black guys than you got in Senate. How cool would that be? But Brian Kemp, not too bright. Of course, I mean, obviously, he did not know that Kamala was going to be the next president. He did not know that because Joe Biden is not going to last. We know that. But yeah. Uh, good video featuring Finnegan. Yeah, we love that dog. Yeah, I saw that, Harry. Um, the World Economic Forum did a bit, uh, did a article in 2016 or 17 that you will not own anything and you'll be happy. You'll be happy. Look at me. We're making people happy. We're the happy man from happy land. I'm being sarcastic. <sighs> that, that's freaking scary stuff, Harry. That's straight from the, uh, the, the, the Maoist playbook, I guess. Nuts. Uh, I missed a bunch of stuff. All right. I missed a bunch of stuff here. Hold on just a second. Ford is coming out with an electric F-150. Man, that's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, William Barnett says CO2 is plant food. That's why they say sing to your plants. It's not the singing that makes the plants grow better. It's the CO2. Ha. Ah. I'm singing in the rain to my plants. That's CO2. CO2 is a fertilizer. Uh, with all due respect to America, I can live anywhere I want and vote anywhere I want. I have a 30 odd eight, 30, uh, 30 odd eight that agrees with my. All right. Okay. Harry, no state will allow waste over state lines. Guilty truck owner. Any of you guys drive a truck? Actually, it's funny. Uh, what, what you should ask, um, John, is a Democrat. Do you do you not just drive one? Do you know anyone who drives a pickup truck? That and that's uh, someone had talked about that in some thing I'd read a while back. And the Democrats will not know anyone who drives a pickup truck. Not only will they not own one themselves, they won't know anyone who does. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, they could have gasoline engines with no CO2K. Nuclear is the way to go. Nuclear, nuclear. 
Uh, it's new gen nuke that golf ball could supply your and a new gen nuke that golf ball could supply your entire energy for a year. That's, I mean, it's just it's insane. It's insane. It just is insane. Problem no one wants it near them. Well, they can build, they can, that's not true. They can freaking put it near me. I don't care. I freaking, uh, I, I love it, man. Nuclear blows that away by far. All right. Uh, hello from Myrtle Beach. Up, Kurt. I appreciate your videos living our dream at the beach prior to retirement. Do you offer services, budget review, and retirement plan? Yes, I do. You can go to heritagewealthplanning.com and you'll see my fees and everything. Are you, I am a fan of HSAs. Would you invest in them the same way you invest in your IRA? Yep, absolutely. Uh, is an HSA worth it? Sure, absolutely. All right, let's see. What's that? What's that? If you buy REITs, you have to research the one. Yep, it looks like Josh the dog is alarming on the Dominion system. <laughs> Uh, John Miller used minivans from the car. Rentals are dirt cheap now. You Okay, used minivans from the car. Rentals are dirt cheap now. I understand how they're so... I don't get it. Used minivans from the car. Rentals are dirt cheap now. I understand they're so expensive. I don't get that. doesn't make sense. Uh, if ours has have the house and buy them, I'm not sure. I don't get what all that means. Our Vanguard managed bond allocated portfolio seems correct. No need to worry about inflation if deflation is likely. Uh, uh, okay, if deflation is likely, do you have to worry about inflation? No, I, I'm not. I'm not following that. Uh, okay, good. That's where we left off. Hello, paw the like button if you haven't done it yet. Where's your brother? Yeah, I'm gonna go get Finn. Is he going potty? Hold on, I'm going to go get him, show it to you. Mm, love you. Yeah, can I just show him real quick? I'm going to just show him by the Oh, come on, Pablo. Yeah. Look at these brothers. There's Finney. <laughs> oh, man. We think he's like some part of a Rhodesian. What's it called, man? Ridgeback? Rhodesian Ridgeback is what we, he's definitely a mutt, but he is a, uh, my name is Finnegan. I live on the second floor with Pablo. It's funny seeing Pablo. Pablo runs circles around Finn outside. It is the fun because Finn is so big. Good boy. Uh, and he's kind of he's not he's kind of clumsy because his legs are so big. <laughs> he's so heavy. He's clumsy. And uh there Finn will be chasing Pablo, and Pablo will just like pick it up in like a sixth or seventh gear. It is the funniest thing. And Finn will go flying because he can't keep up with this dog. <laughs> when we're walking. Fritz Gilbert and his beautiful had taken us out to lunch. Well, we, you know, we, they went up to see him Blue Ridge. And Fritz said, uh, um, give everybody, oh, this guy's big, big and heavy. Oh, there we go. And Fritz, they took us by, um, they took us by this uh, barking lot up there where they, uh, <laughs> where they give away dogs. And my wife saw Finn just laying there, minding his own business. She goes, pick him up. I said, really? And I picked him up and he started kissing me and hugging me and everything. And, and that was it. And it's over. Oh, man. And he actually slept like a champ last night, but he is heavy. We, uh, we see Rid Rhodesian Ridgebacks or whatever they're called. They're going to be like 110 pounds. It's crazy. So Finn, like Pablo is all 13, 14 pounds. This guy is already getting heavy. And uh, he's got these huge. What, can I show him the paws? Look at that paw. <laughs> that paws the size of. <laughs> Oh man! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! There, look at that! Look at the size difference! Oh my goodness! Love you guys! All right, all right, cool. So that's my that's our new addition. Isn't that right, big boy? Um, two hundred two hundred bucks, man! You can have a uh, dog like Finn yourself. Isn't that right, buddy? Want to see everybody? Hello! Oh, want to give me a kiss? Come a kiss? 
Oh, oh, look at that paw. Tell me that's not the cutest thing ever. Oh, my goodness. My name is Benny. Oh, look at, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a good boy. I love you. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to say bye-bye. 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 I'm going to give you another bath, but you still stink. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, I know. I can't help it, Kathy. Oh, man. I got to put that again in his own workout barbell plan. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Oh, love the sweater on Finney, don't you? He's so cute. Oh. Uh, and I have to double thumbs up. The dog looks tired as hell. That's all he does. He just sleeps. He's a sleeper. I, uh, he's going to be a big boy. I tell you, man, 110 pounds. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I voted for Doug Collins instead of Kelly John. I'll vote for Kelly for sure. Uh, the current Utah AG will most likely succeed mittens. Uh, who's a, I'm not sure who that person is. Um, you like, uh, Oh, man. Welcome to Tesla family, my index fund friends. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. All right, hold on just a second. Uh, California has over 5 million registered Republicans. The problem is the red is 10 million Dems. And four, they store waste outside nuclear power plants. Advanced nuclear is available now with the right backing. All right, there we go. Hybrid engines on trucks, just get a V8. New York, okay, there we go. I think we left off with that. Clean coal. All right. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we're shutting down our nuclear power plants and France is building brand new ones. Exactly, man. Uh, Rob says, Harry, you know that all the nuclear waste produced since the beginning of the nuclear age could fit in a soccer stadium. And it's just not dangerous. I mean, it's just not, man. I, I don't get the issue. Like, I, I mean, I, it's weird. Um, guilty. Okay. Right here. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Rob says it's not really nuclear waste. That waste could be burned in a four gen nuclear plant. It's kind of like, remember the old days oil was a, I mean, li literally oil, destroyed the value of people's property it literally they had no use of it remember we used to use whale blubber uh for freaking lighting and stuff like that oil was a bet you want to save the whales it's not some freaking jane fonda led liberal thing from california it's capitalism man oil saved the whales for sure absolutely and uh, it used to be if you found oil on people's land it destroyed the value it's amazing oh here we go here goes bible good boy um, whoa, I lost 35 people when I showed people Finn. We must have Kim Davis and her family on board who don't like dogs. We had 240 people, now we got 205, so they don't like Finn. Uh, let's see. I'm going all right. So, John says, I'm 65, gonna live on 50,000 pension and 300,000 bio the next five to six years. Uh, before tapping wells at a good holding spot while I drive, uh, draw 5,000 a month. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're going to have, uh, 61, you need, you got 50,000 and you're, and of that 50,000, uh, 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 you need 60,000 a month, a uh, 60,000 year, you got 50,000 a pension. <laughs> absolutely, man. 100%. Uh, I'm a very honest financial planner. That's what you think, James. That's what all honest people make you think. Ooh, ooh, I'm honest. Ooh. Uh, if you're single, fill up the 10%, 12% tax brackets and have the rest in qualified dividends. My dividends are MLPs. Would I be smart to move money out of my IRA and sell my MLPs, Master Limited Partnerships? Uh, hey, babes, 
How are MLPs dividends taxed? Are they are they qualified? They're not qualified, are they? Uh, ML Master Limited Partnership dividends. Didn't you had that case? Uh, I thought you had MLPs. What was the other one you had? Was that private? How are those taxed? Okay. So my wife says PTPs, privately traded partnerships. I'm not sure if that's the same as MLPs. Uh, the tax rates are, depends. They could be qualified or ordinary. So I guess it depends on the one you have there, Marty. Uh, are you? Okay. All right, so Vinyl says you can use stock loss carry forwards against profits on your primary residence. He did it himself. I don't know. I want to see that in the code. Um, my 401k is with T. Rowe Price. But I like T. Rowe Price. I'm going to call him with T. Rowe Price, William. Any dividend stock index funds I like? I I mean, I just like the van. It's not dividends. It's actually managing one, VDIGX. Um, there's only got 40 stocks in there, so it's very, very active, uh, which is good. Not active in terms they trade a lot, but it's not very, uh, it's not a closet indexer, that's for sure. So if they bet right, you're going to make money. If they bet wrong, you're not. That's all there is to it. But I, I like BDIGX. It's actively managed fund, and I'm, uh, I'm all about that for sure. Uh, have I heard anything about increasing IRA contribution limits to 10K? No, and, and I, uh, I hope they don't. Uh, any word on the 1960 COVID penalty? The hell's a 1960 COVID penalty? I haven't heard of that. A guitar lover, you got any? Uh, this is Tony Iami, by the way. Iami, you got any? Uh, I don't know what that is. 1960 COVID penalty? Some somewhat new to my channel. Very educational. A future episode, if you have time, can you include some in Florida? Some formers how ASA HSAs roll into everything. Um, well, HSAs. Are they rolling rolls into, like how they fit in your plan? They fit in the plan that you should max that puppy out for sure. Eric says, I believe that I think he, Eric's referring back to the CARES Act. You can take a hundred thousand out and it won't get taxed if it's put into an IRA. Yeah, I mean that's that's not A, that's not the CARES Act. B, you can absolutely take a hundred thousand out of a 401k and roll it to an IRA. It's not this it has nothing to do with CARES Act. The question is, will your employer allow you to do that while you're still working? And that's completely contingent on your employer. They don't have to, for sure. <clears throat> uh, I can't stand the World Economic Forum. I think it's their Davos crowd. I, I, the idea that now there's some conspiracy, um, you know, they, they make it seem like a conspiracy means it's fake. It's like tinfoil hat stuff. There's no conspiracy. Oh, it's a conspiracy, but they telegraph. They've been saying this. I mean, they, like Harry's talking about, they say what they want to do. And just because you use their very words to say what they say, what they want to do, doesn't mean it's conspiracy that you're some kind of tinfoil hat. It's, they're stating it explicitly. This is what the World Economic Forum wants to do. And it's, uh, it's freaking ugly. And we're sitting there like, ah, it's okay. Well, Bill Gates, yeah. it's nuts. It's nuts. And it's not tinfoil hat stuff. Just read the freaking thing, man. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a communist. Just... <laughs> Where I first started becoming an anti-communist when I, when I read what they wanted to do, they said explicitly, they said, this is what we want to do. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah they do want to take over the world. They do want to enslave. I mean, this is, <laughs> they stated it. And Salinsky used the enemy's words against them. That, that's, yeah, somehow we use the enemy's words against them and the enemy's, Backed by the mainstream media, we're conspiracy tinfoil hatters. It's not. Uh, so my wife is in her early 40s, has stage four cancer. Man, I say a prayer for Travis's wife. Oh, Heavenly Father, man. I can't even imagine. Just we're praying for Travis and his beautiful. Mm. And if you got children, just look out for them. We know that she is going, that you will weigh her with your loving arms at some point. But man, I, I just, I, man, we just, nothing but blessings for them. Just look out for Travis. Look out for her. Mm. And make us all remember to be empathetic and compassionate for people who have it worse off than we do. 
because we are always someone who's got it worse and always remember them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yeah, so her chance to quit, she's going to have to get disability. I'm sure she can get disability. I'd be stunned if she could not, Travis. I, I just don't know. Yeah, I talked to my man Skip Ritchie at the Skip Ritchie Law Firm. I love Skip. He's a good guy, good Christian man. Uh, he's scattered, but he's he's good at what he does. I mean, there's no other way around that. When I say he's scattered, he's he's a madman in a good way. Uh, uh, but he's good at at uh, getting and filing for um, disability claims for sure. So Skip Ritchie Law Firm, R I T C H I E. He's on YouTube. Um, uh, is Roger Ritchie Jr., but Skip Ritchie is what he goes by. I, I just contact him and let him work his magic for you for sure, because your wife should be able to get disability, but that's the extent of my knowledge. Uh, uh, yeah, great reset. Exactly. Yep, yep. The great reset. It's it's not it's not a travesty, man. Um, Jennifer says, hubby is stage four. His social security was approved in a couple of weeks. There are some diagnoses that give a rubber stamp. Yep. Yeah. Oh man, Jonathan says he's got stage four. Uh, man. And Jennifer, husband, hubby had stage four. Does that mean if you're stage four, that's not, uh, I don't even know how to ask this man, but, uh, Ah, uh, does that stage four mean it's, I don't know how to ask this, but it's over like soon. It sounds like, I don't know. Um, uh, geez. Uh, all right, let's see. I recommend equally. Yeah. Well, I had a question. My mom wants to take money from her IRA, but we don't know how to pay the tax to the IRA. She's scared of tax fraud if not done right. Um, oh, the 1960 thing. Okay. Gotcha. That 1960 thing. Okay. Understood. Um, all right. So your mom, well, she's going to have to pay the tax no matter what, Tim. So Tim says, uh, my mom wants to take money from her IRA, but doesn't know how to pay the tax to the IRS. It looks like he's trying to say, okay, to the IRS. Well, I'm just, you know, if she's worried about it and doesn't want to, you know, get fraud, just, you know, it's a penalty. She doesn't hey, look, man, it might not be a penalty. I don't know. It's just, it depends on how much she takes out and whatnot, but just let her, when she fills her tax thing out, you know, they'll bill her and then pay it. Then it's no big deal. I mean, it's, it's not, if she doesn't pay in the, uh, the estimated tax, it's, I mean, it's not going to kill her, man. It's just not that big of a deal. It's just not, obviously we want her to pay the right tax at the right time, but she takes 10,000 off an IRA and she was supposed to pay 1200 bucks in taxes. And she waits until April when she files her tax return, it'll cost her, you know, 1200 bucks plus 6% penalty. It's just not a huge issue. Um, all right, so I, that's the, the COVID-1960 thing for social security. Uh, well, given that we have an average wage index and cost of living adjustment both going up, that sounds like it's a moot point now. Uh, I don't think we've got the AWI numbers. Now, let's take a look. Did we get the, uh, let's see if we got the AWI numbers here. Hold on just a second. Uh, Social Security AWI for 2020. I don't think we got them yet, but let's take a gander, shall we? All right. No. All right. So here's a. Uh, all right. So here's the uh, Social Security A at National. Average wage index, uh, you can see here that uh, 2018 is 52,000, 2019 is 54,000, uh, 2017, 50, 48, 48, 40. So you can see it's gone up except for this one year right here in 2009. Um, and so this uh, 2020, um, this is what we're waiting for. So when does the AWI for 2020 come out? I don't know. That's what we're waiting on. That number right there is going to determine everything. This one number right there. So, when if when is the? Uh, we just uh, when will the 2020 AWI for Social Security 
come uh, be declared, be awesome, be declared. All right, so here's a lefty. Uh, ooh. Eh. All right, so here's uh, as of July. I already did a video on this, by the way. Um, hold on a second here. All right, yeah. So in July, there. Okay, yeah. See that? I don't, we. I, so the liberals are saying there's going to be a 5.9 percent re reduction in AWI between 2019 and 2020, but that was using the uh, end of. Um, literally by the end of uh, May numbers. So, I mean, if it's only 5.9 by the end of May, it's going to be significantly higher than that because in you know Q3 was huge growth. So eh, it, it, it's not going to be nearly as bad as what we initially anticipated because Q3 was gigantic. Q3 was huge for uh, growth. So if when they're looking at the numbers in the end of May, it was down 5.9%, and then Q3 was huge. That's, you know, at worst, it'll be what, one, two percent. So it's not going to be huge. It won't be as bad as what we initially were worried about from Andrew Biggs. Let's see if Andrew's got anything on uh, that. Hold on just a second. Let's see if. Uh... Oops. Let's see if there's any new stuff from Andrew Biggs. We'll check out AEI. Yeah, that's great. Heavy-handed bureaucracy is set for a comeback under Sniffy Joe. Not good. Um, COVID-19 election. Right, let's just read Andrew. I thought I said Chris Barfield. I was like, wow, Chris Barfield. Okay. And we got uh, Andrew right here. See if he's written anything new recently on. Yeah. All right. So, so. All right. How the COVID pandemic could reduce near retirees benefits. We talked about that already. Asking the wrong questions on retirement saving. All right, um, we'll just click on this to see if he, hold on just a second. Yeah, we've, we've already looked at that. Okay. Um, yeah, let me close the door. Oops. Uh... Is the enrolled, edge, uh, enrolled agent designation good for financial advisors? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Georgia has found, yeah, I saw that. I put on uh, Floyd County. Yep, this just keeps getting weirder. It is all done by Rick. Do you know who did it? Dominion. Nothing weird there. Yeah, Ford would be out of business with their Ford F-150s. Exactly. John James, right on. I did a book report on coal fishing in fifth grade. Wow, that's pretty cool. Man, that's nuts. I did a book report on Tom Seaver in fifth grade. So, uh, Ryan, you are ahead of me, man. That's uh... Watch my video on deflation. We live in a deflationary environment. Uh, what is the best site for IRA to Roth conversion calculator that considers yearly chunking? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I just use my own uh, software, a right capital. Yeah. Um, uh, generally speaking, should 401k be totally depleted before taking Social Security? By depleted, uh, it should be in your Roth, absolutely, um, without question. 
Um, I've got no debt other than a mortgage with 150,000 on it at a 1.88. Home hit with hurricane and I approved for 90,000 SBA loan. Should I apply the loan or keep? Should I apply for the loan or keep? Oh, I ran out of. Might have a sudden drop off because Tim Cass IRL live streams at 8 a.m. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, I'm competing with Viva Frey on Sunday. Uh, is AWI just 1%, 1.6% of two point, uh, two point, uh, 29? We don't know the number for AWI for 2020 yet. Uh, AWI's average wage index, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. All right, cancer is scary, but they're light years ahead of just a few years ago in terms of imaging and precise removal of cotton time. Uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. Sorry to hear that, Rob. Stage four, not always terminal, but in our case, yes. Oh, man. Ish. Sorry to hear that, Jennifer. Uh, my wife had breast cancer, Sloan Kettering. The, that Nicole Sapphire on Fox News was her doc. Yeah, so many people, so many problems that makes ours uh, look trivial. Completely agree. Nope, can't be saying that. Uh, Can't be saying that, brother. Appreciate you uh, deleting that uh, thing there, Rob. Uh, just come on, man. Don't uh, if you all would. Um, don't be saying bad things on this channel, just because uh, obviously we have YouTube looking at it, and I don't want YouTube to uh, ban me for sure. Uh, I have a pension, six uh, eight k. Have a job. Don't want to pay taxes. Should I start? Side gig like Uber, right off everything? No. <laughs> uh, no, uh, just pay the taxes, man. I mean, come on. You don't want to pay taxes, so you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to fake. Uh, you're going you're gonna to do all this labor to fake you have all these expenses, so you're going to pay tax on six to 8000 bucks. You think the IRS doesn't know all this stuff? Just pay the taxes, dude. <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, I just, uh, I mean, look, I'm not trying to bash you here. I'm just sitting there thinking the amount of hoops to jump through in order to avoid, you know, let's say you're married, six to 8,000 taxes, you get 24,000 as a standard deduction. You get 12% tax, you're in a 12% tax bracket. You're going to do all this other labor uh, in order to write all this stuff up. And you think the IRS doesn't recognize a lot of the Uber stuff is cash business. I just, why? I just don't get it. I, look, I don't like taxes either. It just as odd to me what people do to avoid a little bit of taxes. That's just as strange. I, I just think I, I know this from my old fat, my old days of analyzing mutual funds for clients. Well, I have this fund from 1983 and it was paying 12 cents a year in dividends. I know that added to my cost basis and my broker's statement won't tell me what my new cost basis is. So I'm going to go back every year. I'm like, oh my God, just pay the freaking tax. The time you're wasting could be time you could be doing something productive. Why, why are we doing this? You could be going out in the garden, growing your own food. You could be teaching a kid how to play the violin. You could be freaking die. just, oh. <sighs> yeah, the military's match will always go to the regular. Yep, exactly. Um, 100%. MLPs are ordinary income, butterfly portfolio. Yeah, I it didn't, I, I am familiar with it. Just, eh, it's okay. Uh, California is shutting down their last plant, nuclear plant in 2025. They're putting other issues to make dirty oil, dirty electricity generation uh, impossible in 2025. Not only are they shutting down nuclear, they're making it harder to generate electricity because of dirty electricity generation. <laughs> and they already can't keep the lights on. And they're going to mandate electric vehicles. I just, I, I, you people in California are friggin' nuts. You live in a fantasy land. 
I was just as insane to me. I mean, it's, 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 it's not even idiotic. It's evil. It's almost like Trump could have, like, these guys are silent Trump supporters because all they're going to do is they're going to say, uh, yeah, this didn't work. And people are going to come back with a fury saying, bring back Trump. The idea that you need freaking, you're going to get rid of nuclear. You're getting rid of hydro because hydro are environmentally hazardous. Uh, you're getting rid of uh, you're, you're getting rid of coal. You're getting rid of I mean anything that's that's dirty, and, and you're going to mandate all solar on houses, solar for electric vehicles. I mean, where does the freaking power going to come from? And if you say that uh, solar array uh, facility with the with the uh, the mirrors, and I forgot uh, forgot the place in California, you're a freaking idiot. You're dumb. Or you're, you're either dumb or you're ignorant, one of those two, or maybe a combination thereof. You're not going to power California with solar and those that solar plant uh, facility that you have down there with a mirror. It's just not happening. It's the most asinine thing. And you can't keep the lights on now as it is. I just, it's like, and what's going to happen is they're going to drive everyone away who says, I'm moving to Nevada. And they're going to vote in the same thing in Nevada. It just is nuts because those people who can move are the people who got the money. And then they're going to go down to Nevada, vote in the same friggin' way, and they're going to buy up the real estate in Nevada, raising the prices for everybody else. That's what I'm saying. We got to ban Californians. Look, I'm, I'm saying that somewhat facetious, trust me, because I know a lot of people get the hell out of California because of their politics. They're saying, I, I, I don't fit in here anymore. But there's got to be something where they say, no, if you voted for that crap, you can't come in here and vote for this crap. That's not the way it works. Um, all right, so watch Chernobyl to show us how bad nuclear is. All right, so I. <laughs> oh my goodness, because I saw a documentary on Chernobyl, which is run by commies. We can't do nuclear. Oh my goodness. Ah! Ah. Fukushima, what is it called? Fukushima. Come on, come on. The idea that nuclear is freaking evil is horrible. Uh, you can make a case about that, sure, if you want to do it with communism. But the idea that freaking nuclear is going to, I just, it's, I, I don't know what to say. It's like, they, it's like COVID. It, once they get in and they scare people to death, people just lose all sense of rationale. And the, I, I just, and I still want to say, okay, all right, let's just say, let's say nuclear is scary as Chernobyl says. All right, let's say fossil fuels are as scary because it, it spits CO2 in the environment. Let's just say that. How the hell else are you going to power your life? And I don't just mean electricity. I mean, truly power your life. How? How are you going to do it, man? How are you going to fly? How are you going to ship product from China over here? How are you going to mine? How? Well, the technology on battery power is just, Elon Musk almost has it. The efficiency of solar panels, oh, wind, oh, hydro, oh. biomass, oh. How are you going to do it? And that's the thing that these guys get away with. They, they talk a big game, but just ask them, how are you going to do it? And they're always going to say the technology is coming, it's coming. How are you going to do it right now? Because you're saying nuclear is evil because it's dangerous, which is not. You're saying freaking uh, fossil fuels are evil because they're going to kill us with CO2, which they won't. So we don't have any time to wait, right? Apparently, we need to get it now with no dirt, dirty fuel generation, electricity generation, and no nuclear. How are we going to power our society? I, I'm so over this crap because it's such a fantasy land, man. It's nuts. Uh, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a better chance to win the Super Bowl with what Tom Brady's 44 years old that we're going to power our society on freaking uh, renewables. Solar, wind, again, hydro they don't like either anymore, but we'll just throw hydro in there and biomass. It ain't flipping happening. Stop it. It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for people who think this way because it's ignorance on steroids. Um, yeah, he's one lucky pup to have a crazy dad like you. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna try to do a video of showing up uh, Pablo running around, uh, 
run around Finn is funny, man. Uh, all right. Let's see what else we got here. Josh Trigger, just watch the show on your TV. TV powered by Nuclear, just saying, brilliant show. Uh, no oil, no steel, 100%. I, I think I did a... Uh, fossil fuels are expected to deplete in 15 years. That's not a fact. It's, it's just not a fact. Or are we back to arguing this peak oil crap? Oh, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> Chicago or Minnesota tonight? I don't know what that means. They are increasing efficiency of renewables by one to two percent a year. No, they're not. They're not increasing solar by one to two percent a year. It's not happening. There is a max with solar that's going to happen. Just re-understand the physics of how solar works, please. For the love of the good Lord, understand the physics of how solar technology works. And until they get batteries, it's all new point. It does not matter. Yeah, peak oil, I tell you. Uh, I just, I, I'm sitting here stunned that people are are just this ignorant. I don't know what else to say about it. And ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorant means you don't know. But you're ignorant because you choose not to know or you just haven't been educated. And I grow weary of having to educate people on this stuff because it's insanely easy to figure it out yourself. Just read for heaven's sakes. And I'll always revert back. So sustainable energy without the hot air. You can get this for free as a PDF, but I don't think you should. I think you should get it because I like to highlight stuff and put take notes and stuff like that. And it's just a freaking this there. This guy who who died young, that guy right there, who died young, is a physicist and he breaks it all down for you. You cannot. You cannot freaking do the what you think you can do. And he says it in there. He breaks it all down. He's a big green guy. Um, it's actually funny because he has a video or a chapter in here by these people who went all solar in California, if I can find it. I actually emailed the guy. I say, hey, would you ever want to be on a be interviewed for my YouTube channel? And he uh he was nice. He emailed me back. I, I had a feeling he wasn't too keen on that because he didn't want to be a I think he was worried about being canceled, to be perfectly honest with you. Because he's, he's probably lefty. Let's see if I can't find it here. Um, if I can find that guy. He's a nice guy. Uh, well, he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, right. So, and this right here. All right. So I'll, right here. Let me see. Average sunshine. Average sunshine. Watts per square meter. Watts per square meter. Anchorage, Alaska, 87 watts per square meter. That's it. You're not getting solar up there. All right, so we go down all the way down to uh, Honolulu, 248 watts per square meter. That's it, 248. That's one of the best. In all of America, that is the best. 248 watts per square meter. Los Angeles is 225. Atlanta is 182. So basically what you're saying is you're saying at any – and if you take a 20 you get uh, for every meter square that's a solar photovoltaic you got your the sun is giving you on on average in Atlanta 182 watts per square meter All right so 182 watts if you get 25 percent efficiency uh, solar photovoltaic panel you're gonna whatever that is it's 45 46 watts that's all you're getting times 46 by 24 that's how many kilowatt hours you're getting at one square meter in Atlanta that's it that's it can that power some stuff? Yes. Can it power our entire uh, uh, energy? That's just electricity. Energy need, no, it just can't. It can't do it. It's an impossibility. Could it, if we had battery storage that could last a long time, that you could keep? Yes, 100%. We don't have that. We're not even close to that now. It's just, stop, stop. Let's see if you talk about molten salt in here, Rob. I, I uh, This is... Yeah, molten salt, 178. So let's see what he says about it. A technology that adds up. All the world's power can be provided by 100, uh, kilowatt, 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers square in the Sahara. Is this true? Concentrating solar power in deserts delivers an average power per unit land area of roughly 15 watts per meter square. So allowing no space for anything else in such a square, the power delivered would be 150 gigawatts. 
This is not the same as current world power consumption. It's not even current world electricity consumption, which is 2000 gigawatts. World power consumption today is 15,000 gigawatts, of which only 2000 is electricity. You see the difference between power and electricity? Total world power consumption today, and this is written over 10 years ago, is 15,000 gigawatts, of which electricity is only 2,000 gigawatts. So the correct statement about power from the Sahara is that today's consumption could be provided by 100, uh, 1,000 kilometers by 1,000 kilometers square in the desert, completely filled with concentrating solar power. Uh, that's four times the area of the UK. And if we are interested in living in an equitable world, we should presumably aim to supply more than today's consumption, to supply every person in the world with an average European power consumption of 125 kilowatt hours per day. The area required would be 2,000 kilometers uh, by 1,000 kilometers squares in desert. Fortunately, the Sahara is not the only desert, so maybe it's, a more, it's more relevant to chop the world into smaller regions and ask what area is needed in each region's local des desert. So focusing on Europe, uh, let's see. Uh, so focusing on Europe, what area is required in the North Sahara to supply everyone in Europe and North Africa with an average European's power con consumption of 125 kilowatt hours per day? Taking the population of Europe and Africa to be about a billion, the area required drops to 340 kilometers square, which corresponds to 600 kilometers by 600 kilometers, the area equivalent to one Germany, uh, okay, or the 16 Waleses. The UK, okay, all right, there we go. So what was he talking about? It's molten salt here. Um, and all the, uh, I think, the, oh, right here, there it goes. Uh, and I think the most promising renewable is solar power, concentrating solar power in particular, which uses mirrors or lenses to focus sunlight. Concentrating solar power stations comes in several flavors, arranging their moving mirrors in various geometrics and putting various, uh, and putting various solar power conversion technologies at the focus. Sterling engines, pressurized water, or molten salt, for example. But they all deliver fairly similar average powers per unit area in the ballpark of 15 watts per meter squared. Anyway, so that's, what, that's all he talks about, molten salt. So it'd be interesting to... Uh, to read more about molten salt, but uh, the idea would be, uh, I want to see if I can't, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to find that guy, that's too bad. Um, it was such a good book, man. If I could, uh, I'll say it, and I'll say it again until I'm blue in the face. To get us, uh, it seems one must fly around 25,000 miles per year in economy class, which is the equivalent of 60 kilowatt hours per day. All right, so if you are a frequent flyer, uh, you, you have to sacrifice your green living car. That's just a fact. The power of the sun rods, this is the thing right here. This is the max sunshine we're getting. The power of raw sunshine at midday on a cloudless day is 1,000 watts per square meter. The power of raw sunshine at midday on a cloudless day, the sun right above you, is 1,000 watts per square meter. That's it. That's what the sun is giving us in terms of power. How much of that power can we convert into electricity? That's the efficiency of photovoltaic. Average raw power of sunshine per square meter of flat ground is roughly 100 watts per square meter. So, so the average raw power in the world, a square meter is a big space, is 100 watts per square meter. That just ain't much. Inclusion so far, covering your south facing roof at home with photovoltaics may provide enough juice to cover quite a big chunk of your personal average electricity usage but roofs are not big enough to make a dent in our total energy consumption. Yep. Uh, the solar figure six, six, hold on. All oh, right here, there it is. All right, here's, I mean, I can build those two guys right there. The solar warriors, two solar warriors enjoying their photovoltaic system, which powers their electric cars and home. The array of 120 panels, 300 watts each, 2.2 meters squared each, they got 120 panels of 300 watts, 
2.2 square meters for each panel. They get 120 of them, allowing a DC to AC conversion, uh, 30 kilowatt hours, an average output near Santa Cruz of five kilowatts or 19 watts per meter square. That's the solarwarrior.com. And if you can see that right there, yeah, good luck getting that in your solar rooftop array right there. Hey, buddy. All right. So, um, the cost of building a nuclear plant is this. Uh, France recycles them, add reuses. Tesla exploits their leaders of renewable energy. Uh, Ladies in the house, now they sell power on Europe. What is wrong with electric cars? Have your drag race, a Ford or Tesla? Tesla, good luck. Yeah, I gotta, I mean, that's the, uh, I mean, that's what makes electric cars great. The acceleration is freaking to die for. All right. Josh doesn't seem to have much faith in technological advances. <laughs> you guys keep saying that. You keep saying that. There's going to be technological advances all the time. I just got to find this. I'm going to find because, uh, and yet here we are. It's like, it's like you guys are completely under this realm of, it's just a matter of time. I'm sitting there saying reality says differently. Reality is when it comes to freaking physics, the, allow, the amount of efficiency in a solar panel is limited. There's just, there's no two ways around that. You can say technological technological advances until you're blue in the face. It doesn't make it true. You can say battery storage is coming. We're almost there. They've been saying that for years. I just always got to go back to this one uh, if I can find it. Right here. Probably my favorite chart of all time. Let's show you. All right, then we'll call it a night. Right here. All right, Wall Street Journal, Walter Mossberg, he writes, he used to write, I'm not sure if he's still even around, but he used to write about uh, computers and stuff uh, for Wall Street, or Wall Street Journal. 22 August, 1978, solar power seen meeting 20% of needs by 2000. Carter may seek outlay boost. Federal planners have concluded that solar energy can contribute as much as 20% uh, of U.S. energy needs, not just electricity, U.S. energy needs. <laughs> oh, and people are saying, we're almost there technologically. Technologically, we're almost there. And yet, here we are. You guys are being fed a crap sandwich, and you're falling for it. It's nuts. Nuts to me. Smarter than that, man. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. It, in fact, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can have all the efficiency in the world until we get the battery power. It's irrelevant. It's just all there is to it. We only have, on average, 182 watts per square meter in Atlanta. That's it. And until we can store it, all this is not. It doesn't matter. The efficiency of 25 or 30% efficiency in a solar panel does not matter. It matters not until we can store it. That's all that matters. It's all the contingent on battery power. All the efficiency in the world doesn't mean anything. It's, we can't store it. And we are not, there's, no, I'm telling you right now, look, I hope they find storage. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I live in reality. And reality says the storage is so far away that uh, we need fossil fuels. And to say, well, the technology increases and then say we should get rid of fossil fuels because technology increases. How are you going to power your country? You can't. All right, my friends, I can call it a night. Appreciate y'all. Uh, yes, uh, right, Dan. Many countries still burn cow dung. Indian people are dying on the hundreds of thousands. Uh oh, you can hear the dogs barking because they're freaking have to breathe that crap. They heat it and they, they heat their homes and cook their food, cow dung and wood, and it's causing them huge amounts of pollution in their lungs. You know what fix that? Pipelines of natural gas. But someone else says, oh, we're a... Uh, 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 they were saying, well, we only got 15 years left of fossil fuels. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we're still, I, I mean, I'm literally stunned that we're, we're arguing this. Peak oil, stop, stop it. Uh, watch gas, going to go uh, suck, yeah. All right, uh, I'm out of here, my friends. We'll see you guys later. I like burning coal for electricity. Thanks for being here.
Thanks for giving me a thumbs up on, on Facebook.